Hello everyone. And I am the founder and ESL teacher to my own company, Applied ESL. Applied ESL is an online English tutoring service with a creative approach where I help adult learners build their confidence while practicing and improving their English speaking skills. I have been an ESL teacher for 18 years. Yes, 18 years. I am an author to five books. As you can see, <laughs> these are my ESL babies. The Apply the ESL Life Skills Student Workbook 1, Workbook 2, the Signs Resource Book, which are all things street signs, COVID-19 signs, and store signs. Okay. You don't have to be an ESL teacher or a student. This is good for everybody because signs are everywhere. And I am the sign lady, so I am here to teach you about signs. And the very last one, which is the baby, is Job Readiness Workbook. The good news, ladies and gentlemen, is that all of my ESL books can be found on my website, ebook version of my books. Check out my website. I have two sales going on right now. The first sale is for anyone who buys anything from my website, you will automatically get a free copy of the Science Resource Book 2, which is the international version. These are signs from all different countries. The second sale is I do have a package of 26 video lessons from this text, this uh, workbook. If you buy the video lessons, you will get a free copy of this, of the ebook version of this book for free. Okay. And that sale will end December 31st. So definitely, definitely jump on it now. So yesterday I posted a survey in my Instagram story and I asked all of you, what do you think I can do as a teacher to help my adult learners, my ESL learners, um, to practice and learn English and still cope with what's going on. Okay. We all know what's going on in the world right now. And it's very sad and it's very tragic and it's a very scary time for us all. And, um, I wanted to find a way of how I can kind of help in that. So I not only teach English, but my goal in life is to help people because I love helping people. And my goal in life is to give people hope we need hope. Okay. We need hope. And in doing that is why I always focus on life skills because these are things we know how to do in our daily life, but it's also uh, a way for us to learn how to feel in doing the things that we do in our daily life. So I like to combine two of my passions, which is the motivational helping part with learning English. I hope that makes sense. There are many different ways of going about this. So let's talk about the word cope. What does cope mean or coping? Coping is the ability to deal with something. Okay. It doesn't mean to solve something, but it helps you to deal with it. What do I, what do you mean by that teacher dog? Let me give an example. As some of you may or may not know, I have health issues, right? I've been going to neurology pretty much for the past almost a month now, right? And when I go to these appointments and I am hearing about what's wrong with me and going through testing and stuff, it doesn't feel very comfortable. I don't feel comfortable because my body hurts, right? I wear a back brace. I walk with a cane. So it's not very comfortable, but I cope with it, which means I learn how to deal with it. Now, if you are a student, let me talk to my students for a moment, and you are practicing your English, and now what's happening in the world is happening, right? This can be very, very challenging, depending on where you are in the world, depending on where you are with your English, and it also depends on how you're feeling, okay? One of the things I've always said to my students, and I will continue to say, learning English is not just about teaching the language, you know, or just teaching or just learning English. It's really about how you feel. Okay. Because how you feel or how you cope. Okay. is going to help you to move forward. Okay. So let me give you an example. You are going to English classes every day and then this situation is happening in the world and you're not feeling very happy about that, obviously. And maybe the topic in your class, 
um, may come up. Maybe the topic comes up in your class and your teacher might go over a certain vocabulary words that's based on what's happening in the world, right? But you, emotionally, you're not happy, yes? And so you're trying to focus on learning the vocabulary words from your teacher but your emotions feel very heavy. You're not feeling good. So here's what happens. You no longer focus on what you're learning in class because of how you feel, right? And this is human nature. This is not uh, something bad, it's just normal, all right? So how do we cope? One thing I always suggest to my students is the following. We have no control of what goes on in the world. Let me repeat that. We have no control of what goes on in the world. That's in general. The only thing you have control over is yourself. The only thing that you have control over is yourself. So while you are learning English during this very difficult time, okay, you have to really ask yourself, why am I learning English right now? Or why am I continuing to learn English? right now these are the questions you have to ask yourself okay you don't have to share with anyone you don't have to talk to your classmates about it or your teacher this is just something for you to think about and the reason why I'm saying this is because if you don't ask yourself these questions you will get distracted by all that's happening the opinions of others the facts the the, the news and all these different things right the politics all of that you won't be able to focus on your reason and your why as to why you are learning English, okay? So you really have to ask yourself, why am I doing this, okay? Now, where the coping comes in, this can be challenging, okay? And I'm really trying to be careful in how I approach this topic because I am aware that I am talking to the world and everyone comes from different countries everyone have different belief systems so I'm speaking very general okay so this is not as we say in English a one-size-fits-all which just means that it's not like what I say is the way okay there are many ways of going about this first thing to do is you want to take a deep breath okay you want to take a deep breath because this is something I've been learning as well when you're hearing a lot of stuff when you're seeing a lot of stuff when you are not feeling happy okay it will distract you from learning English so how do you cope you take a deep breath so if you're watching this right now I want you to look at me and repeat after me breathe in breathe out one more time breathe in breathe out Okay, take it for someone who has made this mistake many times. When you are distracted and you're thinking a lot and you're feeling a lot, you don't breathe. I mean, you're breathing, but you're not intentionally breathing. Okay, and what happens is if you're not able to breathe and to feel, you're releasing that stress and that tension. This is what I mean by coping. Okay? Sometimes doing nothing is the best thing you can do for yourself and there are people on social media who may say it's different but I'm gonna tell you from personal experience because I am a go-getter type of person and I, I'm, I like to solve problems and be the hero and help everybody but I've learned too, even in my own personal life that sometimes the only thing you can really do is breathe if you're a believer you pray okay and that's it because when you are going through stress and you're dealing with what's happening in the world whether you are personally affected or know someone who is or you're just a good human being you just have a heart like me and you just you just feel okay it will consume you because we're human okay we're not made of stone and what happens is now you're in a classroom with classmates and people Maybe if you're here in the United States, you you with students of different co uh, countries and cultures, right? And everyone's feeling different way. And here you are trying to focus on learning this language, which is English, but you have all this other stuff that you're feeling too. 
And then in, from my personal experience, for example, when 9-11 happened, right, there was a discussion about that. And, um, you know, some students had their thoughts and opinions, and then they got a little meow, meow, right, because everyone has their opinions and thoughts, et cetera. So the coping is to allow yourself to be present in the moment, but to stay centered within yourself, okay? It allows you to say, okay, I, whatever your name is, have no control of what's going on. I am learning English because, okay, I am going to focus on that. It's easier said than done. Let me talk to my teachers for a moment, okay? I'm a teacher, all right, and even as teachers, we have to do the same thing because what makes it harder for teachers now is that sometimes you will be the target, so to speak. And let me explain what I mean by that. If you're standing with your students and you're teaching a lesson and you have one student who's feeling very upset about whatever and he or she says something to you and then other classmates jump in, now there's a bit of an argument or disagreement. And then you try to jump in and you try to... Um, I guess mediate, try to figure out why is everyone so upset, right? And then now everyone comes at you. Well, teacher, dar, what do you think about? Well, I feel this way and she feels that way. And, eh, and it's all this conflict, right? As teachers, we hate to say this. We get blamed for everything. <laughs> we may not even know why you're upset. We may not even know what's going on, but we will get blamed for it. Trust me, I've been blamed for things that, <laughs> okay? Um, and it, it's it's difficult, to cope, to deal, right? So what I try to do as a teacher is I take a deep breath, okay? And I also remind myself why I'm a teacher. Why am I here? Why am I doing what I'm doing? Because if I don't go back to that, I can easily take things personal and I can easily get upset and then I will lose focus on why I am teaching the lesson that I'm teaching. Okay, does that make sense? Now, let's say you are a student. Let's go back to my students. And you're learning English and you're home and maybe it's the weekend. And your teacher wants you to do some homework assignments and just encourage you to practice. And you attempt to do that, but you just don't feel like it. You know, you just don't feel like it. And this is just in general. We, we're all human. We get like that. So how do you cope? Well, one thing I would say is if you are home and you are looking to or trying or attempting, I should say, to practice your English, whether you're talking to someone or you're watching YouTube or watching me, maybe, I don't know, whatever it is, maybe instead of doing this for one hour, maybe break up the time. OK, so maybe you might do five minutes of practicing a vocabulary word, maybe the pronunciation. And then you stop, do something else. And then maybe a half an hour later, you come back to that. But maybe you practice for 10 minutes, even if you're practicing the same thing. But what you're doing is you're giving yourself breaks in between. Yes, because, again, you're coping while you're learning English. OK, so you're going to hear me repeat this a lot. This is not, again, something that's going to work for everybody. These are just some of my suggestions. If you have suggestions, I welcome you to leave underneath this video to please leave your comments and your suggestions, what has helped you, because this has helped me personally. When I would lesson plan for my classes, but let's say I'm going through a tough time, I would stop and take a break and then go back, okay? But then there were times I wasn't very smart and I would just push through and just do all the lesson planning for two or three classes at once. And then I'll be so exhausted. I don't even remember who I am. <laughs> okay. You want to practice, but instead of maybe you're used to practicing for one hour, maybe, or two hours, maybe you do it for 30 minutes. You don't want to be hard on yourself because what you're telling yourself is, which is very important, is that I'm not feeling my best. I still want to learn. I still want to practice but I'm not feeling my best. You want to acknowledge that within yourself. You don't have to tell anyone this. This is what you're telling yourself. Because if you lie to yourself and say, I'm feeling fine, but, I'm, but at the same time you're not, and you try to go on as if nothing's bothering you. Let me tell you, I am the queen of doing this. I am the queen of doing this. And I will tell you right now, 
you will experience something called burnout. Burnout just means when you become so exhausted physically and mentally that you can't do nothing. And I've experienced this last year. I became so burned out that just turning on my laptop, I would cry. That's how bad I felt. So if you don't want to believe anything I'm saying to you in this live, please take this part seriously. You don't want to experience bur burnout. It's a real thing. Okay, it's something that um, takes time to get over. It's not just, oh, I feel tired and I'll just sleep and that's it. No, it's, burnout is really serious. And a lot of people do experience it. And oftentimes it takes them years sometimes just to move past this. So don't be like Teacher Dora. Okay, you know, learn to cope while you're learning. If you're a teacher, cope while you're teaching. It's, it goes both ways. Okay. I'm aware that a lot of my beautiful foreign brothers and sisters love to talk about politics. I'm aware of that. I'm opposite from that. I actually don't like talking about it. But if you're one of those people who love to talk about politics and you know you watch the news faithfully and you really want to know what's going on in the world, which there's nothing wrong with this. Let me just make that clear. Just be aware that something is going to trigger you. What I mean is trigger just means to affect, okay? And something's going to bother you because that's how these things work. And it can, in fact, stop you in your process. And what I mean, I mean this more from a mental standpoint. Like physically, you can still be doing what you do, but mentally it might just stop you or, or interrupt your focus. Okay. So be very, very, very careful with that. Learn to put things in perspective. Don't let that interfere with your learning, your progress. If you're finding yourself feeling uh, sad or depressed, sometimes you just have to sit and just kind of deal with that for a little while. If you find yourself really angry and upset, you have to feel that, yes. But you don't want these things to take you away from your learning journey because it will happen. And same for us teachers, If same for us. It will take us away from our teaching journey. So this is where the coping comes in. It doesn't mean you have to necessarily stop what you're doing. It just means you're just finding different ways to deal with how you're doing it. And as a teacher's priority is how can I continue to educate in a way that is going to not only help my students, but it's also going to not cause controversy. It's going to not allow me to feel worse than I already feel and not to, and also uh, make sure that it's not making my students feel worse than how they feel, right? Uh, you know, it's it's a very, as we say in English, slippery slope, which means it's not balanced. It's like this, right? It's not comfortable. As teachers, I don't care if you're teaching children or adults. If you are teaching right now, and especially if you're teaching ESL, this is a very difficult time for us all. And I say that in the professional sense because we teach the world facts and I'm gonna be honest with you um, I didn't know until I really got really into this career how much my flag affects people honestly I, I, I didn't think about it you know um, how many questions that would be presented to me I understand my color bothers people I get that so I've, Kind of figure that out but i realize it goes beyond just color now you know now it becomes a nationality thing when something goes wrong un unfortunately i become the spokesperson for that or the one who have who have to come up with answers and that's the part that's very uncomfortable for me because it's just one of me i don't have the answers but sometimes depending on who i talk to it's like you're supposed to know you're supposed to resolve, you're supposed to feel, and that's that. For my ESL teachers, just know that I, I feel your frustrations, your fears, your aggravation, all of that, because we teach the world. We really do. And no matter what part of the world we're in, somebody out there is going to be mad at us because some people feel like this is not the time to 
teach English because of whatever, or you're teaching a certain group of people, or you're supporting this, or you're supporting that. So we're going to get scrutinized no matter what. I accepted that. I've accepted it before I was on Instagram. Seriously, because I would see, I don't know about anyone else, but let me say for my teachers out there who have experienced this face to face, know what I'm talking about. Not to take away from internet trolls and all of that, that's just as bad. But if you've dealt with it face to face in a classroom, okay, you know it's even worse. Okay, so this is why I, I tend not to take things personal here online because I've dealt with it in actual classroom in real time and has supervisors stand by and say, deal with it, okay? But regardless, in person, online, doesn't matter, it's still wrong. We don't have all the answers. And just because we have a flag attached to us because of where we come from, doesn't mean that we are the enemy. It doesn't mean that we agree to everything. It doesn't mean any of that. We just happen to be born in the land that we're born in, and that's it. And for my students out there, I need you to understand that. I understand frustration. I get the anger. I get the hurt. I get all of that. You're frustrated for many reasons. I understand. And because of history, because of a lot of things, you're feeling a certain way. And I get it. I get it. I get it. I do. And even if I, if I don't understand every single detail, because I may not, but I can understand the overall frustration, okay? But your teacher is not the reason for that. Let me repeat that. Your teacher is not the reason for that. Don't be blindsided by where your teacher's from. And let that be the reason for why you get mad. Because you don't know how that person feels. You don't know anything. Don't let that be the judgment, <laughs> you know? And I'm just really saying that to all students, okay? This ain't about one or the other. This is for everybody. Because everyone is guilty of doing this from time, from time to time, whether you're a teacher or a student. And when you get upset, you know, when you get angry, when you get sad or whatever the case may be, um, it affects you in many different ways. And a lot of times you don't think before you speak, you just speak and then think later. Um, you have to be careful. But I would say as an ESL teacher and a business owner, this has been very heartbreaking because this affects our business, this affects our work, because we're teaching the world. And it's hard to reach the world when there's all these boundaries and different things happening. And then no one thinks about you as a teacher anymore. Now it becomes you either with us or against us. And it puts you in a very awkward position. It really does. So going back to my topic of how to cope while learning English or to teach English, I'll just end by saying this. You have to go back to your why. You really have to be strong-willed and, sh and strong-minded and be willing to stand up and say, I am a teacher because I am here to help you learn English because and that's what I'm here to do. And you have to be strong in that because people will challenge you. And trust me, I've had it happen to me many times. You don't owe anybody anything. You don't have to agree with anything if you don't want to. You don't have to talk about anything if you don't want to. It's your choice. And that's part of the coping because sometimes being quiet can be your best friend. Yes. It doesn't make you a horrible human for being quiet. What happens is that you have to think about your mental health first. Because if you're sick, you're no good to anybody. And you are welcome to disagree with me on that. But in my humble opinion, you have to care about you first. You have to think about your family. You have to think about your safety. If you allow what's happening outside consume you in such a way that you forget your purpose and your reason and yourself and your life, then you're no good to anybody. And the people who are yelling at you and DMing you and criticizing you are not going to be there to help you in your time of need. That's all I have to say about that. I thank you for watching this live. Thank you all for your love and support. Uh, thank you for your kind messages, your prayers. I will keep you updated with my health. Stay strong. Stay true to yourself. Cope, cope, cope.
take a deep breath. Let's do it one more time before I end the live. Please repeat after me. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. And always try your best. Just love you all so much and I'll see you in the next video.